this week's episode, we once again hit some all-time highs, as well as some very new scary lows. This is definitely going to make me feel sick. Hey guys, welcome back. It's safe to say that this week's episode is not as plain sailing as the last week's episode was. We decided to push the envelope of our skills just that little bit further and it's safe to say that we came a little bit unstuck. Hang on, before you tell the story, can we just tell everyone about the new website? I've, I've literally just started. I know, I know, but I think it's fair to say that this channel doesn't exactly have a shortage of you talking to the camera. Whatever. Okay. Come on, <laughs> budge up. <laughs> so, now that we've hit the 10,000 subscribers, which we're really thrilled about, it's clear that that is definitely way beyond just friends and family. Definitely. So, to celebrate, we have launched a website um, which I think will give you lots of information about um, us and our stories, how we came to be where we are now, the boat, a little bit about Hank, of course, and... Um, our plans going forward, really, isn't it? Yeah. Just, um, so, yeah, it's cluelessyachty.com. Go check it out. I'll pop a link in the description. And, uh, yeah, just, just tells you more about who we are and yeah, what the goals are. <laughs> anyway. All right. Tell the story. Okay. So this story starts one beautiful summer's day back in Itchy Marine, early in the morning, as we prepare to set sail on our boldest adventure yet. Life jacket for you, young man. Okay, so the reason we're up so early is because we're heading down to Weymouth, which give or take is going to take us somewhere in the region of 10 hours. Now, there's a few hazards along the way, one of which is as we sail past Hearst Castle. The tide can funnel in and get quite strong around there, and so depending on what the wind's doing, we either want to pass through there when the tide is quite slack or when the tide is on our side. It also gets really shallow and so on our way out, on our starboard side, there is a hazard known as the shingles. Uh, equally as unfriendly as the adult version of the chicken box, but it's really shallow along there and there are two options that we can take. We can cut on the inside, use the tide and hug the land, but we're going to take what we think is the slightly safer option, although ever so slightly longer, I'm going to go all the way around and as I say stay in deep water and avoid that if we can. One of the things that we uh, have looked at is the fact that the wind is going to be quite favourable. What we also don't want in this area is a kind of a wind against tide situation. It can create it can create a fair amount of chop and so uh, with the wind is going to be sort of on the beam or on our half quarter so we're going to be hopefully having the wind if the weather predictions are right we've checked the last night and we've checked this morning so we're going to have the wind favorable wind with the tide so we're going to time it so we get there about an hour after high water which means we'll have the tide hopefully on on board for about four or five hours and so it should be should be smooth sailing I don't know if that boat's meant to be going sideways, if it's being dragged sideways, or whether that's that's intentional. Never seen that before. Okay, this episode isn't going to have a huge amount of me talking. I'm sure some of you will be fist bumping that news. Um, but we're going to kick back, we're going to enjoy the sail. We're really going to put the boat through its paces with all the new bits and pieces we have fitted, make sure everything works. And um, before we do that, if you're new here, if this is your first time, just take two seconds right now and just hit that subscribe button and you can follow along as and when we release our videos of two fairly clueless wannabe yachties attempting to get a plastic boat around the world with Hank. Yeah, just right now, boom, hit the button. And uh, yeah, kick back and let's enjoy the sail. All right, 
just very quickly, Carly's up there hand steering. Let me catch you up in just a little bit of drama that's gone on so far on this trip. So we've headed out and we had a couple of issues with the reefing lines. Long story short, kind of my fault. We ended up losing a reefing line into the boom, which became a pain. There was a couple of other niggly little things, so much so that we decided just to swing back into port very quickly, get it sorted out with the guys in the marina and head back out. Now the issue is this has added just a tiny bit of time a few hours to our trip so we're behind schedule slightly now the reason that's important is because the hazard that we were most concerned about was sailing past Hearst Castle and the, the shingles and just we, we just wanted to make sure that we had the tide on our side and that you know we weren't going to be in a wind against tide situation and just passed it as favorably as possible now we're a few hours behind schedule which means now when we get there that we'll still have the tide we still have the tide on our side now we're nearly there but that's coming to an end and then we're going to be uh, the tide is going to be slacking and then eventually turning against us but the winds are nice and light um, they're in a kind of southeasterly direction so we won't be in a kind of wind against tide spot so it's a glorious day and we feel that that's condition we feel that those conditions are fine for us to get through and uh, head round we're not going to go as far as Weymouth now on our journey west we are going to pull over in Pool Harbour because another issue that's just happened is our Raymarine autopilot has decided to give up the ghost and uh, it's got some sort of XTE error coming up, cross track error, I, I don't really know what, what that's all about so we're going to pull over in Pool Harbour get a mooring ball and then just have a have a little rethink and see what we can do to get that sorted if we can and then um, plot our course for the next day so uh, plan B plan B first world problems all right anyway we're about to go past the needle so come come check it out How you describe this moment? monumentous Now that would be a fantastic place to end this video. What a climactic finale. And the thought had, had passed through my mind. But that wouldn't be a true representation of how this journey played out. Because it was only an hour or so after those final drone shots were taken that the wheels on the bus, as it were, started to fall off. Okay, so the day is not without a few more dramas. The wind really dropped off and we didn't want to be turning up at Pearl Harbour in the dark. So we went to fire the engine up only to find that there was no water being pumped out of the exhaust system and then there was some smoke coming out. So we very, uh, we very quickly killed the engine 
uh, or turned it off and had a look in the raw water strainer there wasn't anything in there looking like it was blocking it uh, I took the I took the front of the raw water intake pump off check the impeller everything seems fine took it out had a look popped it back in um, can't seem to figure out what's what poured some water down the strainer and it seems to be f filtering through so I can't see where a blockage might be but we're having a slight change of course now so we are just going to sail across to Studland Bay which looks like an anchorage that will be protected from a sort of um, from well about as protected as anchorage we can find within striking distance we're going to go and anchor up and then once we're settled might put a snorkel and mask on jump in the water go see if there's a blockage on the bottom but I can't imagine there is failing that I'm going to have to do some figuring out slightly further up the cooling system to see if there's anything that's blocking it but I can't again I can't figure out what that might be um, with the impeller being intact and all so there we are slight change of plan and this is where we are heading to This will be our first time anchoring without the use of an engine. Hope the anchorage isn't too busy. Some of you may already realise how we're going to come unstuck here because the real issue we have with no engine and no wind is time. Time is the problem now. Because we continued on and we decided we'd set sail for Paul, we could make it past Hurst, it wasn't a problem, the weather conditions were still fine and we weren't going to have big seas given how light the winds were and the direction they were travelling in relative to the tide. Let's park that. This is another one of those unforeseen situations. Now, as we're very, very slowly sailing over towards Paul now, we're kind of afloat at this point, but even if the wind picks up later, the day is racing away. And Paul Harbour is a harbour we've never been to before. So to sail into Paul Harbour and to try and navigate around Paul Harbour under sail in the dark, that's a big ask. And I think there's some bylaws that say there's a section of Paul Harbour you need to go past the ferry, I think, under engine anyway, which we can't do. So that may completely disqualify us from being able to go into Paul Harbour at this point in these circumstances. But the other thing to factor in is the fact that rather than arriving at Paul Harbour on a slack tide, we're going to be arriving, potentially, depending on how long it takes us to get there, on an ebb tide. So we're going to have to be juggling all these things in the dark as novice sailors. This is potentially quite dangerous and this is not something I feel confident in doing and so it's at this point we decide that heading over to somewhere like Studland Bay just a simple anchorage is in a straight line from where we are we can drop an anchor way away from all the other boats and an uncomfortable night's sleep to me sounds the lesser of two evils than trying to negotiate what is potentially going to be a very treacherous and even dangerous situation. This is definitely going to make me feel sick. All right, very quick update for you. I have disconnected the pipes for the art show. I've disconnected the pipes for the raw water intake and that is the pipe that goes to the water pump and there's good suction on the water pump it has emptied a bucket of water which is great that says there's no blockage further along the lines which is good because that's probably a bit above my pay grade um, and I've opened up the seacock which lets the raw water in and it does come in which is why I filled this bucket up with but not with not with a tremendous amount of force so I'm thinking we've probably got like a partial blockage maybe in there so we're not a million miles away from port and so we're gonna just try and the wind is pretty much gone um, so we're just rolling around here almost adrift so we're gonna we're gonna try this kind of this kind of makeshift system for some reason like I say I don't think there's enough water coming in um, to fill the raw water intake pot or either that or maybe something's wrong with the seal on it I'm not quite sure um, but we're going to try and sort of limp the boat in whilst I keep an eye on this and sort of the raw water coming in filling up the bucket and if it gets too low we can kill the engine and uh, as I say limp into port and then try and figure out what it is probably involve jumping off the boat having a swim around figuring out if something's stuck and unsticking it. Never a dull moment. Right, let's do this. Okay, more updates. What a pickle. So, we've managed to find a sweet spot where 
we can allow just enough waters coming through from the seacock for the raw water intake into a bucket and we've got the engine at just enough rpms where it's taking out the same amount of water that's going in so if we rev the engine any more we drain the bucket down too low and if we take too many revs off the bucket overflows through trial and error we know both of these things and um, i'm sure there's a better way i'm hoping that somebody's going to watch this video take the mick out of me something chronic and i fully will take that on the chin uh, it's a learning experience but i can't seem to get water to be drawn up into the uh into the the water filter so this is what i've co concocted take mercy take pity on me and help all right but here, here we are so here's our bucket raw water in water being pumped through the system bucket maintains Carly, meanwhile, yeah. playing with two knots of wind and a broken engine. <laughs> but yeah, and the sun is directly where I want to be. We're going. heading in the right direction, though. We we decided uh, we decided that the anchorage of choice wasn't going to be quite protected enough, and if we didn't have the use of our engine whilst we were there if I didn't get the problem sorted uh, we either wanted to be in a much more protected situation or have the ability to get out of dodge if the situation changed and given that my mechanical skills as you've just seen uh, are left wanting we thought the best thing to do would be to limp the engine all the way over to Pool Harbour pop into the harbour find somewhere sheltered to drop the anchor breathe and then figure this all out in the morning Sound like a plan? Yeah, we've got two, right. two knots of wind. So as you'll see in this story so far, we're kind of flitting between Paul Harbour, not Paul Harbour, Paul Harbour, not Paul Harbour, and heading to Studland Bay. And the thing is, the, the issue turned out to be that even at 1100 revs, that was the max we could push the engine, it was taking us longer to get across the bay than we had realized. And so we're now rapidly losing light. So Carly and I have gone through all the weather reports, we've cross-referenced them with, with, with multiple different sources, and the lights, albeit coming from an easterly direction, which is no real protection at all in this anchorage, they're not strong. So we decide, again, given the fact that we're gonna lose the light, the best course of action would be to limp our boat with our partial engine capacity to the outer, ri outer rim of Studland Bay, anchor as far away from anybody else as we can in water that's not too deep, and then hopefully we can get a good night's sleep or some night's sleep, and then we can look to take care of the problem the next day. Well, at least it's a nice evening to be stuck in a pickle. <laughs> I'd rather enjoy it uh, sat with a rum in hand, I think. Anchor somewhere with a nice dinner in front of me. You can do that. Yeah. How about you, Hank? Yeah. We'll take you for a little extra in a minute. Not yet, not yet, we're not there yet. No, okay, sick me. having a lovely time really <laughs> she's just trying to make she's trying to make me feel better about the fact that i was <laughs> huddled in the fetal position down near a stinky diesel engine it's all right sweetheart i'm sure your journey's been just as tough <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right we're nearly there i'm looking for the pub oh there we go <laughs> priorities priorities the pub has more employees pub has more employees pull the other one any excuse any excuse right we don't have we don't have a huge amount of play with our engine with regards to the revving up, revving it down. As I say, too many revs drive my bucket out. Too few revs 
flood the cabin or the saloon, flood the boat. So, before we get to this anchorage, I'm doing a little bit of reconnaissance from afar so we can hopefully pick a spot with minimal engine fuss. I think I see a couple of options. You will be pleased to know that we did in fact make it to the anchorage safely. We did manage to drop the anchor and set the anchor and then just before it got dark, when we were happy that the boat wasn't gonna go anywhere, we'd set a couple of anchor alarms on a couple of different devices, popped Hank in the dinghy, rowed to shore so he could you know, stretch his legs, do his business, and then we all hunkered down to try and get a good night's sleep. And a good night's sleep really was just me sitting up, staring at my phone and the anchor alarm and Navionics paranoid all night that we were going to drag anchor because we only had a thousand revs per minute, either forwards or backwards, to set the anchor. It was quite a tricky, stressful affair, but we made it. We made it in one piece. And there were lessons learned. There were lessons learned. Were there lessons learned? There were definitely lessons learned. And the lessons learned are that, you know, if, you're, if, you, have a, if you have a port A, and a port B, a backup port, that's great. But when halfway through your journey, you're fixing some problems and then you automatically make port B your port A, which we did from Weymouth to uh, Port Harbour, then we didn't really factor in another plan B. So I would probably, in the future, you know, have a plan C. And, and certainly if we're gonna revert to a plan B for some reason, then on the fly, you know, as we've made that course adjustment, let's start looking at another backup port again, just in case some other situation unfolds. So uh, that would probably be something that I've learned. Uh, and just think a little bit more about the, the consequences of our actions. You know, my only thought and I think our only thought at the time was, can we still get past Hearst Castle, the shingles, the needles channel? We were so preoccupied with that being the hazard that we were concerned about that we didn't even think about the bigger picture. And luckily, luckily we escaped unscathed. But there were lessons learned. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, be sure to check the new website out. I uh, hope you love it. It's got loads more information about us in there, about the boat, about our plans, about the project and what this is becoming. And uh, we will join you soon uh, for another episode and stay safe.